Uh, have you seen what is going on with GameStop, uh, AMC, uh, BB, etc.? I have. I have, yeah. And I'll explain exactly what's happening. Because I've lived it on both sides uh, of the trades uh, at working at a hedge fund. And then you wrote here, hedge funds that short of these stocks are getting crushed. I mean, a short squeeze. We'd love your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So GameStop, uh, ticker GME, it's a video game uh, a retailer here in the United States, uh, headquarters down in Texas. I visited with the CEO, CFO, IR many times in Grapevine, Texas, I think where the headquarters are. I used to be an investor on the long and short side years and years and years ago. I know the story very well. The issue with, with GameStop is that it's a widow maker uh, when it comes to hedge fund analysts that are new, that are that are short in the stock, the terrible term, sorry. Um, what happens is this, people bet against stocks in the hedge fund world, meaning instead of buying a stock, meaning going long a stock, they do the opposite. And if it goes down, they make money. But what happens is sometimes it's so obvious what a great short idea is or betting against a company, um, that so many hedge funds get involved and it gets crowded very, very fast. And if there's any slightly less negative news that comes out, uh, then it leads to the hedge funds panicking, which means a short squeeze. Um, they're, they're getting squeezed out of their shorts and they get rid of those positions because they're terrified because they're losing a fortune. Uh, and, and the way to know um, if, if a short is crowded and you should not short it is if the short interest ratio uh, is over 10. What does that mean? Well, the short interest ratio means the number of shares outstanding in the market that are shorted, that's the numerator, divided by the average daily trading volume. So if a, company's, a company trades uh, only 100 shares a day in volume, um, but there's 1,000 shares that hedge funds are short, then the short interest ratio is 1,000 divided by 100, which is 10, which means it would take 10 days of volume on the market to cover all of that, the, the shorts for the hedge funds. That's a short interest ratio. And that's very high. Uh, and you should never, usually without doing your research, short a stock that has a short interest ratio above 10. Because what happens is this, if any slightly positive news comes out uh, on the stock or slightly less, less negative news, um, then everybody panics uh, in the hedge fund industry. So how do you know, aside from, from um, a short interest ratio, if all the bad news is, into, is priced into a stock already. Well, the simple rule is this, okay? And you have to do your own research, obviously, and look at many other factors. But if a stock goes up on bad news, or if a stock goes up on slightly neutralish news, then that could mean that it's a crowded short. Too many people are in it, right? So again, if a stock goes up on bad news, or if a stock goes up on neutralish news, um, then that means that it could mean that it's a crowded short and everybody that wants to short it already has and everybody that wants to sell that stock already has. So let's talk more about GameStop. So GameStop has been an obvious crowded short for hedge funds. It's a widow maker uh, for, for years. Uh, and, and the reason is because uh, many of us know that going to a store and buying a video game is not something we're going to see a gazillion years from now. Okay, so... Amazon is not going to put every clothing store out of business or every retail store out of business, but it will hurt them in the very long run. Now, when it comes to the video game sector, um, in the very, very long run, we'll probably be downloading more games uh, rather than going and buying them uh, from GameStop, uh, which, which hurts GameStop, obviously, because not only does GameStop sell uh, games, um, uh, but they sell used games as well. And if everyone's downloading games, they don't have a used game uh, to, to sell. Um, and so uh, what, what happens is uh, eventually they're, they're less relevant. But I will say this, when I go to GameStop, and I go there a lot, um, obviously not now because of COVID, uh, but when I go to GameStop and I've gone to GameStop for, for decades, I even worked on the merger of, of GameStop and Electronic Boutique as an investor years ago. Uh, but when, when I go there, I love talking to the employees there because they're so passionate about what they're doing. I mean, if anybody here works in the retail sector um, and you want to hire people um, to sell your product, whatever it is you sell, go to GameStop and see how the people that work there sell games. They don't have a job. They have a passion. They love doing what they're doing, right? And they really know their stuff. They really know their stuff. I absolutely love going there. Um, but anyway, so it's a crowded short. And people on Reddit uh, have been talking about the stock 
um, which has driven the price up a lot. Uh, and it's interesting because people are now listening to, to, to forums more so, a little bit more so, uh, than Wall Street analysts. Um, and, and that's not a terrible thing, but I think the best thing you can do is to always do your own research when you invest uh, in stocks. And what I'll do is I wanna show you one of the many frameworks that I provide my MBA degree students. I provide them with an arsenal of, of, of weapons, uh, so to speak, so that they can uh, do their own research on any type of investment class. Okay, great. So uh, right here, this is um, one of the, the weapons, so to speak, that I provide uh, my, my students with. Um, and so this is a, a simplistic Excel spreadsheet I made. There's no macros. Macros are bad. That means that there's code uh, being run, which means viruses potentially. Okay. And I'm sorry if you can't see this perfectly here. Uh, but what I've done here is I created this and there's 100 different steps to analyzing uh, companies. Okay. And uh, what I did was I put it in three buckets, qualitative investment research, quantitative and financial research. And again, I, this is for my MBA degree students. Uh, you can go to the, the website on the bottom here in black uh, and find out more about the program. But I help you analyze everything you need to know about a company from scratch. And there's dummy data in here right now, but I also created for you, uh, based on the data you enter in, a lot, of, uh, a lot of charts that will help you understand the underlying stock you're doing research on in terms of sector exposure, uh, shareholders, um, TAM, total addressable market, that is the bill of materials here, that's called BOM, um, GDP per capita, where the company sells their products, um, GDP uh, heat map here by countries, by revenue, where they sell their products, population growth for those countries, because if you get the macro wrong, the micro doesn't matter when you're doing investor research. Also, the top customers, the average selling price, meaning ASP and volume trends, uh, location of employees, Dow and Mao, if applicable, and that stands for daily active users and monthly active users for, for websites. And of course, just a ton of other charts here uh, for earnings growth, revenue growth, operating margins, etc. And all this is based on questions that you answer here, okay, uh, directly in here. Um, and then what happens is all that stuff is put out into those charts you just saw, as well as, um, as, well as an executive summary here. And also, and you can include technicals if you want there. I, I hit it underneath my, my, my face there in the corner. <laughs> but if you hit print on, on this page, what, what happens is that one pager, which has all live data fed into it, um, is, is, is put into a PDF uh, or you can print it. Your name's on the bottom in case you want to send the idea to somebody that you want to work for or bring it to an informational meeting. What's also done from this um, is a detailed report, meaning a 150-page report for you um, that will help you run circles around Wall Street analysts. That's right. That's right. You already have everything you need to build something bigger than yourself. That's what Seth Godin says. I truly believe it. Never take anybody's advice for what stocks to buy, including me. And I'll never tell you what stocks to buy because I humbly want to teach you how to fish instead of uh, giving you a fish, so to speak. Last thing I'll say in that is uh, there's a service called Motley Fool and people ask me about it quite often uh, on should I listen to them? Um, when it comes to picking stocks. You shouldn't listen to anybody. Just do your own research always. Never read editorials and newspapers when it comes to what stocks to buy. Do your own research. And for more details uh, on that, you can do a search on on YouTube on Motley Fool uh, and you'll see my, my humble thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah.